there is money out there for the taking for things like seeding cover crops, the cost of the cover crop seed, soil mapping, soil testing, splitting your nitrogen applications, using inhibitors, and even for hauling and applying manure, compost, and digestate. You can also get money to establish perennials or top up legumes in your perennial stands. And if you want to get into rotational grazing, you can get your internal fencing and water supplies covered. Stay tuned to the rest of this episode for more details as I cover this and the other interesting things that are happening in my world. Hi, my name is Scott Gillespie of Plants Dig Soil, the name of the podcast and the consulting company. We're an independent agronomy company. We do not sell products. We provide advice only. We focus on realistic regen ag, which has to be proven and profitable. We work in person or remote or a combination of the two. Our pricing is set to be affordable to anyone from a Q&A package to full farm planning. There's no long-term commitments. You can retain our services, do it yourself, or hire others. Of course, we always love to work with people over the long term. Just before we get into the off-calf funding, I want to highlight an opportunity to see all of you in person if you're in Alberta. The University of Lethbridge is having a sustainable agriculture showcase on March 31st, and it goes until April 1st. It starts with a public lecture by Dr. Martin Entz. He was my thesis advisor when I did my master's degree back in uh, the early 2000s in what would now be called regenerative agriculture. So I have been doing this or thinking about this for a long time, and um, it's going to be a great lecture to hear him speak. So that's on the Friday evening, and the following day, there's a mini conference going on, and there'll be speakers on soil microbiology, greenhouse gas emissions, some of the local research that's happening here, and there will be a small trade show, and I will be set up with my booth there, along with Aline. So we hope to see you there. Okay, let's get into cover crops. So this one is fairly straightforward. It has to be new to the farm or new to the field that it's in. It must be purchased seed and it only covers the cost of custom application. Now, anyone can sell you the seed, and anyone, including neighbors, could custom apply it for you. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. The other big restriction is that it has to have at least six inches of growth going into the winter. So that would be fall of 2023. It can be harvested or grazed for forage or harvested for forage or grazed um, as long as it has this amount going into the fall. And specific to my area or into the high value irrigated areas for, um, for bedding ahead of potato or other horticultural systems, this is a permitted use for this program as long as you have the growth going into the winter. Soil testing and mapping is the next BMP or best management practice that you can get covered in this program. Now there is a change from last year. It was last year you could get soil testing and mapping done. For some reason they have changed it this year that it can only be one of them. So it is still a benefit. You can um, you can get your fields mapped, which is the higher cost or the higher barrier to entry. Um, and then you'll still have to pay for the soil testing, but if you've been soil testing in the past, that's already something you're used to. So it at least brings down your cost to more normal costs for what you have. And in the end, you get these maps and zones that you can use 
in the future for soil sampling, for making prescription maps, and for anything that you need them for. Okay, let's move on to amendments. So this is for things like um, manure, compost, and digestate application to the fields. Um, the biggest restriction is it has to be something that the field hasn't had in the previous 10 years. It doesn't cover the cost of the amendment, but it does cover the cost up to $75 per acre of hauling the, app, the, the, the amendment to the field and for the application. So it can be a combination of the both. Um, if it's higher than that, they just pay up to the $75 per acre. So this is a good way to get some manure out to fields that you've had a hard time getting stuff out to because they are a long distance away. And that is the point of this program or this part of the program is to get manure in a better place or used um, on the fields that really need it. So if you're doing this or planning on it, it's a great year to get um, at least um, a, a fair portion of your costs covered, especially if the barrier was the, the hauling and application costs. Now perhaps the most confusing best management practice that we have in this program, which is the fertilizer side of it, is next. Something that disappeared from the program that it took me a little while to figure out is that they were originally going to cover the costs of delaying your nitrogen from fall to spring, and that has disappeared. The reasoning I have been given for this is because the fertilizer prices dropped, so you actually were further ahead to do it anyways. Now, um... I, there's not much I can do about that. That's their rules, um, but that is what has happened there. Stabilizer products, including ESN, are put in there. These are the inhibitors that help to prevent the gas off of the, the greenhouse gases. Um, and the ESN does the same thing, though it's, um, it's more of a slow release, not just in that initial part. Um, there's some additional restrictions in this year, which um, I don't understand why, but they ESN can only be $4,800. Um, did you get back for it? Um, I'm not quite sure why, but that is in there. Now, if you want to shift from broadcast to banding of your fertilizer, this can be put in here, but again, it only covers the custom banding or rental of the equipment to do this. Um, I don't know why you can't do things to retrofit your equipment. I think that would be something that would be a lot more beneficial to producers and would allow them to continue doing it for the years to come. But that is the restrictions of the program. And they're only allowing $15,000 per applicant for this. Um, again, I'm not sure why, but that is the rules of the program. Split application is the next. And again, it's um, it has some, um, it has restrictions in it. Um, it has to be new, a new practice. It only covers um, third party or rental costs for applying it. Again, it doesn't allow you to purchase equipment that allows us for you to do it ongoing. But again, it's the, the rules of the program. And this is an odd one to fit in here. I don't know how it exactly fits into this, but um, another one under the same nitrogen management system is increasing perennials in your system. So it has to have been an annual crop that, or an annual crop rotation, and you have to be establishing perennials. And because it's a, it's a climate action fund and because they're looking at nitrogen reduction, it has to have legumes at least 50% in it. 
And so this is um, another one if you are thinking of doing it or if you have some areas that just never really produce and you thought maybe just put them into a legume, this can cover the, the costs. Um, so it covers the costs of the seed. And again, it's only for custom or rental of equipment to do it. And I'm just going to mention it here because it kind of fits more with the rotational grazing, even though it's in the application for the rotational grazing side, is that if you want to increase the perennial legumes of a forage, you can put, you can apply for that as well. So if you want to boost up a, um, an existing perennial system, then you can apply for that as well. And finally, the rotational grazing portion of the program. The main highlights of this program is that you can help get help with internal permanent or temporary fencing within a, um, a pasture that you're already using or already has a, a, um, a perimeter fence that's established. Now the interesting thing is that in the RDAR program, which this one I am talking about, the perimeter fencing is not included, but in a different one called the Canadian Forage and Grasslands Association, who only do applications for the rotational grazing side of things, will allow permanent fencing as long as you meet more stringent um, rules for theirs. Um, theirs. Their program is a lot more detailed, um, but it also provides a lot more support. So if you need a lot of help doing that, that program is the one that I would recommend you to go for. And in that case, I actually have someone that I refer to that specializes in this and will take over the application for you at that point. Now, if you are just looking to get things, um, the, the things like just some of the fencing and you can make the maps, we can just put the application in. And this, um, this has included things like um, the Razor Grazer is the, the most popular one, but any of the, the temporary fencing all-in-one systems where it's very easy to <clears throat> roll it out and retract it and put it back in, um, Anything a lot, well, I guess I shouldn't say anything, but most things that you can think of, they will cover for this. So um, I do like this side of their program because you actually end up with infrastructure. You actually end up with stuff that you can use in the future. And also rotation or um, water distribution systems are included in this for, for um, th there are restrictions. It's not for making new water. It's just to help get water to where the cattle are so that um, you can graze them without them having to move back and forth all the time for water. So if you've ever thought of doing that, um, this is an excellent time to apply. So just a few more general notes about the program. Right now, it can be only things that are happening in 2023. Invoices have to be after April 1st. And it also has a rule in there about approval date that the invoices have to be after your approval. So this is why I am, I'm really encouraging you to get the applications in now so that you have approval and that anything that you buy or need to access can qualify for the program because we are finding that um, things like cover crops um, and some supplies are running low, and so if you don't buy them soon, you might not even get them. So um, this is why it's really important to get this in now. And they're taking applications now. They'll close November 30th, but if they run out of funds or if they have enough applications funded, they will stop taking applications before that date. So again, this is why I encourage you to get your um, application in as soon as possible. 
there are also a bunch of um there there's always fine print there's always details to it and that's why i encourage you to get a hold of me first we can talk about it um, or you can go to the website and i'll have that linked in the show notes um, it's rdar off calf if you google it you should find that um the the main thing is you have to be an active producer um, for the rdar program it's twenty five thousand of gross farm income the other programs have different levels so sometimes that can help you um, the rdar program pays back at 85 percent of the cost other programs such as the forage and grasslands association pays back at 70 percent of the cost so this is where going through what you want to do what your costs are um, we can look and see which one maximizes the amount of grant payment that you get something that they are really stressing this year is they want pictures of everything with a gps stamp so we're gonna have to make sure even if it seems silly to take a picture of a manure spreader running through the field then it must be done or soil sampling or anything because these fields don't look any different after it's been done so um, that's going to be an important thing and one other thing i just want to to bring up is that the total payment is seventy five thousand. so that's um 85 000, or um i think it's about eighty eight thousand times 85 percent gives you about seventy five thousand. so that's the grant payment and that's where in other programs where it's a lower percentage paid you you can have a higher project cost and still maximize your payment um, and if you apply to different programs yeah which you're allowed to so say if you do the ardar for some cover crops and uh, grasslands association for grazing infrastructure the total that you get paid can't be over seventy five thousand. so you have to watch that as you're doing that and if they audited it and they found it then you'd be liable to pay that back and just to stress one more time um, you do need a professional agrologist or certified crop advisor on the application i have both of those designations and so that is why i'm promoting this and then another big thing is that my consulting fees can be included in the application so it's it's um 10 percent of whatever the project value is up to two thousand dollars so if you are on the fence or unsure about starting with independent agronomy and you're looking at trying some of these regenerative practices there's no better time to start it because most of the costs can be covered so i highly encourage you to get a hold of me